God, they should just reflect on why they themselves don't believe in something as silly as the flying spaghetti monster or Zeus. But these atheists have simply committed the straw man fallacy. Sure. No one naturally believes or is even inclined to believe in the flying spaghetti monster or Zeus, a bearded exactly. man living on Mount Olympus. But as study after study proves, people do have a strong natural tendency to believe in God. Why aren't atheists able to acknowledge this established fact? Why do they have Death, to resort dumb, to blind. straw man? Are they scared? Atheists might be dismissive and say, so what if we have natural intuitions about God? Such intuitions are merely the byproducts of evolution and therefore have no basis in reality. And therefore evolution is not perfect. But How does the that even make sense? atheists making this argument should quickly realize their mistake. According to them, all our intuitions oh. must be the products of evolution. So yep. applying their same logic, none of our intuitions have a basis in reality. Exactly right. But to put it... Because if it is just a useless byproduct of evolution, this boils down to everything being a useless byproduct of evolution. So all of your thoughts are incoherent and nothing that you tell us is real or valuable to begin with. Very bluntly, Atheist, man. that's insane. Yeah, exactly. Because in addition to intuitions about God, we're born with intuitions about logic, math, counting, ethics, and even intuitions about the nature of space and time. Absolutely, it's a double standard. An atheist worship reason and logic. But why do you? Ultimately, it's nothing but the neurological soup in your mind. It has absolutely no value. It is not real. Just as religion is not real according to you, logic, reason is not real either. Moreover, there is no standard for right and wrong, good and evil anyways. So nothing that you say makes any sense whatsoever. According to atheists, <laughs> All of these intuitions are just a product of blind evolution, exactly. which would mean none of them have a basis in reality, which Zero. would mean none of them can be trusted, which would mean the human mind itself can't be trusted. Can be trusted whatsoever. The atheist might exactly respond right. to this by saying that unlike intuitions about God, those other intuitions, like logical, empirical, and ethical intuitions, are established on solid, rational grounds. What is rationality? Well, let's just test that. A basic ethical intuition that all humans share is harming others for no reason is wrong. Atheists Most, endorse again, this belief, psychopaths don't. but why? Imagine someone who questions this. Imagine someone who says, there is no scientific or rational evidence proving that harming others is wrong. He would be right. Only brainwashed nuts would believe that harming others is wrong. Exactly. Such myths are nothing more than the byproducts of evolution. Or imagine someone else denying logical intuitions like the law of non-contradiction, which is the logical principle that no two contradictory statements can be simultaneously true. Imagine someone saying, there is no empirical basis to this so-called law of non-contradiction. Can yeah. you see the law of non-contradiction with a microscope? Nope. Can you detect it in a laboratory? Such a law can only be accepted on blind faith. No, ultimately they're all based on utilitarianism. As long as it benefits humanity, it should be adapted. But at the same time, they're going to discard the evidence that religion actually benefits humanity. Atheism. What can the atheist say to such skeptics? What empirical facts would prove that harming others is wrong or that the law of non-contradiction is true? All the Nothing. atheists could say is that these fundamental beliefs just are, or we have to accept them axiomatically, or the beliefs are valid because they agree with our intuitions, or these are things we all just know. But all of these things could also be said about the natural intuitiveness of God. So by trashing intuitions about God, the atheist also has to trash intuitions about everything else, including logical, empirical, and ethical intuitions, which are at the foundation of science, math, and secular ethics. 
atheism thus becomes a self-defeating proposition. 100%. Can you be a good person without believing in God? Atheists often claim that their atheism is not a set of beliefs, rather atheism is a mode of thinking, namely scientific and analytic thinking. The analytic mind realizes that there is no scientific evidence for God, therefore belief in God is irrational. Atheists say that such reasoning about God has nothing to do with morality. In reality, however, this analytic thinking promoted by atheism has everything to do with morality. To understand this, we need to define two contrasting modes of thought. Analytic thinking versus intuitive thinking. Our default mode of cognition is intuitive. Intuitive thinking is automatic, and it's driven by deep psychological mechanisms we are born with. When a person feels that he should help his ill mother, that's an intuitive mode of thinking. When a sailor lost at sea calls to God to save him, that's also intuitive thinking, grounded in the universal intuition that God exists. Analytic thinking, in contrast, is not automatic or easy. Analytic thinking requires concentration. It's used to solve complex problems and analyze situations. Analytic thinking is used not only in science and academia, but it's also the mode of thought used for criticism and argumentation. Numerous studies adapted. show that when you disrupt people's concentration with loud noises, time constraints, or other distractions, they fall back to intuitive thinking. Hmm. This is why there are no atheists in a foxhole. When distracted by the horrors of war and the imminence of death, analytic thinking shuts off and the intuitive mind takes over. Normally, our thinking is a blend of both intuitive and analytic modes, but sometimes the two modes can conflict. In those conflicts, analytic thought can be used to gut intuitions. This is what we This is ultimately what happened to me when I was in the Amazon rainforest with the shamans. During the influence of the shamanic brew, analytical thinking turns off completely and you are only left with intuitive thinking. This is why in many instances those rituals can lead to spiritual and even religious experiences. See, with atheism, the atheist tells us that analytic thought is the only way to understand the world and the only way crazy. to arrive at truth. It's because they're a bunch of nerds, man. If you only would go Go to the gym in the morning and lift heavy, you already shut off your analytical mind. You already shut off your analytical mind. Those geeks never experience that. Truths, whereas intuitions are nothing but bias. But recent cognitive science and psychological studies have shown that overdeveloping the analytic parts of our cognitive faculties can greatly diminish not only our religious intuitions, but also moral intuitions. World-renowned psychologists and researchers like Jonathan Haidt and Joseph Heinrich explain that high analytical thought is correlated with less of what's called deontological morality. Morality generally falls under two categories, consequentialist versus deontological. Consequentialist morality focuses on consequences and calculating how to maximize pleasure and reduce harm for the most number of people. This yeah. makes consequentialist morality very analytic in nature. Deontological morality, however, is much more intuitive and relies on gut feelings and innate ethical tendencies such as caring for family, feelings of disgust or reverence, respect for authority, and loyalty to one's tribe. To better understand the contrast between consequentialist and deontological morality, consider this scenario. A man goes to the supermarket once a week and buys a dead chicken. But before cooking the chicken, he has sexual intercourse with it. Nothing then wrong with it. Then he thoroughly cooks it <laughs> and eats it. Yeah. Is there anything From the atheist wrong? perspective, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Really wrong. He maximized pleasure. Wrong with his actions. No, nothing. Purely on the basis of consequentialist morality, there would be nothing wrong with this since there's no harm. And in fact, the man increases his overall pleasure. So it might even win, be win. an ethically good action. Exactly. But deontological intuitions tell us that such an act is perverse. It's disrespectful. It violates <laughs> decency and therefore is highly 
immoral. The surprising thing is that when people are asked about this chicken scenario, those who have a Western secular education are far more likely to find nothing objectionable to it. What academics now recognize... Yeah, I assume they will probably trick themselves into believing that there is nothing wrong with it. They will argue themselves into believing that there is nothing wrong with it. Everybody knows. The analytic side of cognition wrong. is inflated Duh. due to education, upbringing, and environment. Deontological intuitions become muted, if not entirely canceled out. Mm. This overemphasis on analytic thinking is exactly what atheist He's psychology is all emphasizing the words a bit as well. About. And if you asked, you might be surprised that many atheists would find nothing wrong with copulating with a dead chicken and then <laughs> eating it. It's not a coincidence Yummy. that many popular atheists have openly stated that they have no moral objections to incest, bestiality, necrophilia, and other so-called victimless crimes yeah, that most people suffers, of the world right? would consider unspeakably evil. There's a vegan logic as well. For them, animals are not supposed to suffer. Therefore, we're not going to eat animals. We're not going to eat eggs either. But abortion? No worries! Atheists have openly stated that they have no moral objections to incest, bestiality, necrophilia, and other so-called victimless crimes that most people of the world would consider unspeakably evil. Even Richard Dawkins recently claimed that there's nothing morally problematic about eating human flesh so long as the meat... And that's what it really boils down to. If you look again into the vegan movement, into the plant-based movement, they want you to eat the bugs. And moreover, they want you as well to eat humans. They're really pages dedicated to eating human meat from corpses. It's been cultivated that's what leads to human clones in a lab. Yeah. What we Clones or dead bodies. We must realize is that healthy Lures. human relations are fundamentally deontological. For example, a woman could greatly increase her physical pleasure if she cheated on her husband without him ever finding out. Sure. But that's why they do it. She doesn't do that because that would be unfaithful and infidelity is morally wrong regardless of any positive overall consequences. Not anymore. A son In might have a lot to gain by frequently lying to his father, but he doesn't do that because lying, especially when directed to one's parents, is morally wrong regardless but they still do. of the upside. A mother could greatly enjoy life if she gave up her baby to a foster family. But she doesn't do that because she her does strong it. maternal intuitions tell her not to abandon her child really do. regardless of the massive increase in freedom she could enjoy. All relationships require a healthy sense of deontological intuition, but this is precisely what a hyperactive analytic psychology destroys. The analytic mind favors consequentialism, and consequentialism says the only thing that matters is maximizing pleasure and personal happiness, basically pumping dopamine into the brain. Yes. But sometimes maximizing that dopamine requires lying, Sit cheating, your cutting off pot. family, betraying cool your community, violating sanctity, engaging in the taboo. So when atheists promote analytic thought as the end-all be-all of human cognition, they're not only burying natural human intuitions about God, they're also sabotaging all organic human relationships. Psychologist Jonathan Haidt, who is a committed atheist himself, as well as others, have published committed. numerous <laughs> studies on how atheists committed are what? less charitable, less generous to family, less loyal to community, more willing to justify lying and cheating for material gain, more willing to engage in infidelity, Duh. and much more. Atheists might claim that atheism is solely about the non-existence of God, but that's not true. Atheism is an integrated psychology that is strongly correlated with an ultra-consequentialist ends justify the means Machiavellian morality that is hostile to all human relationships. It's no accident that atheists have been at the helm of the past century's most expansive and brutal social engineering projects aimed at dismantling and radically reshaping yep. the traditional family. Yeah, that's what happened with communism on the Balkans, where I am from. Communism led to the abolishing of religion. The mosques were shut down. The churches were shut down. During that time, I was baptized in our flat because the churches were shut down. All in the name of the 
so-called greater good. Mm. Secularism institutionalizes this analytic mode of thought, indoctrinating children and adults to overcome their natural intuitions and become cold, calculating machines. It's precisely the atheistic mindset, drunken with an unhinged analytic fervor, that has been fueling the modernist project of hyper-consumerism and atomization that's destroying the human species by transforming us into a race yeah, of... Yeah, I wouldn't say that the Nazis were atheists. ...dopamine-addicted automatons. This is the pill that destroys our nature and kills the soul. But we can By become default. human once again. Alright, so this is it for today's video. Daniel didn't disappoint here. He, of course, made us all very depressed yet again, but nevertheless, very valid points here are raised, of course. And I do understand the dark appearance of this series because it is created to make us think, to see this absolute dystopia that we are headed towards if we subscribe to transhumanism. And this truly is the promise of atheism because if you remove theism, you remove the belief in God and moreover you remove the belief in an afterlife of salvation, you will still have that natural urge, that natural instinct to reach salvation somehow, to get eternal life somehow. So what do you do? You get eternal life here, in the flesh, in the material, of course, with the promise of transhumanism. Yet again, uploading your consciousness into the cloud. This is how you transcend. This is how you will reach salvation. The promise of the atheist is ultimately empty. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.